The Open Wedge High Tibia Valgization Osteotomy, or HTO, with the Tommel Fix System. The Open Wedge High Tibia Valgization Osteotomy is increasingly used in joint retaining surgery on the knee joint. High tibial osteotomy is performed when medial unicompartmental osteoarthritis is accompanied by varus malalignment. The goal is to unload the medial compartment by a lateral transfer of the weight-bearing axis. This procedure delays total knee replacement in young and physically active patients and produces good results. Instruments and Implants For the exercise, the following instruments and implants are used. Several flat chisels, 15 to 20 millimeters wide. The spreading chisel. The calipers. The bone spreader for arthrodesis or osteotomies. The torque limiting screwdriver. The depth gauge. A 4.5 5.0 LCP universal drill sleeve. The 4.3 millimeter drill bit. Three threaded 4.5 millimeter LCP drill guides. The guide sleeve for 2 millimeter K wires. The Tommel Fix guiding block. Two 5 millimeter spacers. The Tommel Fix plate and 5 millimeter self-drilling, self-tapping locking head screws. The screws provide fixed angle locking in the plate. The osteotomy is performed. The upper edge of the pes anserinus and the medial collateral ligament are the main anatomical landmarks. The lines of the biplanar osteotomy are marked on the bone. The first osteotomy plane is now marked with two parallel 2.5 millimeter K wires with threaded tip. The plane goes from the upper edge of the pes anserinus in the direction of the tip of the palpable head of the fibula. The depth of the first osteotomy can be found using a third K wire. The osteotomy is performed just caudal and parallel to the K-wires with an oscillating saw. Both wires help to guide the saw blade in the correct direction. Sawing must be done carefully and slowly with little pressure. Loss of resistance is felt when the posterior cortex has been traversed. After reaching the planned cutting depth, the anteriorly ascending cut is made with the narrower blade. This osteotomy, lying in the frontal plane, must also cross the cortex at the lateral side. Once the cortex has been cut, the blade is directed to the frontal plane. The osteotomy is now completed with chiseling, the lateral cortex remaining untouched. To make it easier to insert the flat chisels, the narrow saw blade is positioned in the osteotomy. The scale on the chisel indicates precisely how deep the chisel must go in the osteotomy gap. A second chisel is driven carefully into the gap. By slowly driving a third chisel in between the first two, the osteotomy can be spread open gradually. Before this step, care must be taken to ensure complete separation of the dorsal cortex to prevent an ascending fracture. The chisels and the K-wires are removed. The flat chisels are replaced by a spreading chisel. Its arms are slowly opened with a screwdriver until the right degree of correction has been reached. The gap must be opened slowly, taking several minutes to help plastic deformation of the lateral bony bridge 
so that the bridge does not break. The osteotomy gap is checked with the calipers. A bone spreader is inserted into the postural medial corner of the osteotomy so that it comes into contact with the hard posterior cortex. Preparation and insertion of the implant. The implant is now prepared. The guiding block is placed on the shaft of the plate and pushed forward up to the proximal end of the plate. The threaded LCP drill guides can be placed in their correct positions in the guiding block and screwed into the plate holes. In addition, space are placed in hole, hole D and hole 4. The plate is introduced into a cutaneous tunnel. The long arm of the plate is applied to the tibial cortex so that the arm crosses neither the anterior nor the posterior cortex. Under image intensification, the T-arm of the plate is positioned over the cranial part of the osteotomy for the locking screws to be placed one centimeter below the joint line. The plate is temporarily fixed with a K-wire placed through the middle drill guide. Therefore, a guide sleeve for K-wires is inserted into the drill guide. Fixation. To insert 5 mm self-tapping locking head screws in the T-arm of the plate, a 4.3 mm drill bit is used. The plate is pressed firmly onto the tibia to avoid the plate spinning. As bicortical anchorage is not absolutely necessary, and to avoid soft tissue irritation, the screwed tips should not protrude from the lateral cortex. The required screw length can be read from the scale on the drill bit. For optimal buttressing of the tibial plateau, the longest possible screws should be inserted. These locking head screws are partially inserted with the power drive and the screwdriver shaft. The last turns have to be done by hand to prevent the threads from jamming, so the torque limiting screwdriver is used. The same procedure is used to insert the screws into hole C and hole B. In a burst osteotomy, the LCP holes allow a cortex screw to be used for indirect reduction of the dislocated shaft and compression of the fracture. The spacers ensure adequate distance between the plate and the periosteum. The blood supply remains undisturbed, and the pes anserinus can be freely moved under the plate. Now the angular stable fixation of the plate shaft can begin. After locking head screws have been inserted into holes 2 and 3, the spacer and the lag screw are replaced by locking head screws. With all the plate holes in the shaft filled with locking head screws, maximum stability is achieved and the correction maintained. Since monocortical self-drilling and self-tapping screws are used here, only a shallow hole is drilled in the cortex with the 4.3 millimeter drill bit of the LCP universal drill sleeve. In holes 2, 3, and 4 of the plate, a monocortical screw fixation with self-drilling and self-tapping locking head screws is sufficient. However, a bicortical self-tapping locking head screw is recommended for hole one, distal to the correction gap. As an alternative to self-drilling and self-tapping locking head screws in holes two, three, and four of the plate, 
Self-tapping locking head screws can be used in a monocortical fashion. This option requires pre-drilling and the use of drill guides. The proximal spacer is raised with a long, long self-tapping locking head screw. Monocortical screw fixation requires 18 to 26 millimeter locking head screws. The internal fixation is now complete and is stable enough for partial load bearing.